mama work. Tell my brothers to be patient in this music shit, it's gonna work. Used to have hoop dreams, remember I used to hit the park first. Now I dream about selling out my first concert. Just have your hand out, know you gotta play your part first. I know that I'm gonna make it, I just gotta get that spark first. And I done been through so much pain, I seen so many things. Now when I'm all alone, I get in my feelings and dreams. We've been broke for so long that I wish it could change. Told my brothers to be patient, they wanna pick up the pace. And when I need a help, no one was there. But when they in need, I'll be around. Niggas be legion, but you just too blind to see it. Watch you be around. Get that little bitch my all, but it wasn't enough. And she left me down and out. I had to stop singing about bitches and get on my shit. Just show them I'm versatile. And I'm in a rush. <laughs> Peace, family and tribe. It's the God Mathematics, and you now listening and watching the Hangout with S Street Media. You heard? It's Friday night, doing what we do at the Hangout, man. It's always a movie here. We your most family. You heard? We got the Plockness yeah. in the motherfucking building, man. Yes. We got my man Get Fetty, yeah. AKA Rod. We got my man J Lo, Wyan, man. Yo. You already know what it is. And we got my man Woody Wood in a motherfucking bag. You know, he's from the hood. And we are chilling, man. Chilling. How you feeling tonight, man? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Excellent, baby. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> you know why you're why you're talking? I'm just checking your microphone. So keep talking, yeah, man. How y'all feeling? So, um, <laughs> BBWs need love too, baby. That's it. That's, That's it. a fact. That's a fact. That's Another hangout. Another hangout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another yeah, yeah. hangout. That's what we we do. Hanging out. And you know, we always trying to get this shit to go correctly. We always trying to get it on point. We improve every week. Every week ain't the same type of thing. We are always trying to grow. We always are trying to extend the brand. We are always trying to produce a great show for y'all. You know what I mean? Yes, That's yes. what this is about. Growth and development. You heard? Thanks for watching. Yeah, so it's Friday night, man. And, um, you know, last night was kind of crazy, man. Um, me and my man Raw, we went to uh, yeah, I actually, I actually got that. <laughs> Yo, so me and my man Raw went out last night. I really don't go out too much. It's a very rare, rare occasion that you get me to step out of my business. Um, but um, shout out to Miss Feel Good, yes, Miss Feel Good, aka Chrissy. She had a little barbecue. Over yeah. there in Queens, yeah. um, yeah. at a secret yeah. location. We don't give those out. Not at all. Yeah, that's a fact. So we were chilling and shit. And, um, you know, eating food. She cooked. Yeah. She had, um, the Spanish dude was cooking too, yeah. right? Shout out to the Mexican dude on the weary. Yeah. Class yeah. 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 well, with that. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I wanted to get his name for that one. Yeah, he did. He, right. he did what it do, right? Yo, he every time he said, I'm leaving. They handed him a beer and he stayed on the grill. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. He hey, came okay. back better and better every better, time. Better, better, definitely. It seemed like the more he drunk, the better the fool got. Yeah. Better his beer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and it was and it was getting cooked consistently. Like he like he should have had a restaurant. He probably did. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a great night um out there in Queens. Um, we got to chill, we had music playing, smoking a lot of whole lot of weed, Ooh. like we always do. Like we always like do. We always do. In, our, on, on, in our corner. <laughs> you heard? We always, yeah, we always got, we turn our, our little corner, wherever event, venue, bar, yeah. wherever, we turn that little corner into the project. That's it. We call that, wow. where, wherever we at is the projects. That's the project. So we had our little project set up last night, you know. You know, you come with your, your crate, your milk crate, and everything. I mean, you're just chilling, your munchies, all that. Yeah. <laughs> and you just gotta vibe out with us, man. We all, we, we come in peace, we come positive. Of course. And uh, you know, and everything was smooth last night. Yo, the game was mad love. Mad love. Mad love. Yeah, they was like, yo, sh um, thank you for supporting her, coming out and shit like that. She always talk about your positive. And yo, we like, yo, she invited us to some place that we could get some food, chill, smoke weed, alcohol. We don't drink, but uh, we if we wanted that, to, man. we yeah, could have. Exactly. 
you know, it was, it was, it's, I'm there. You gonna gotta ask me twice. So we pulled up, you know what I mean? Hopped in the Uber, started raining, pouring. Yo. Five seconds after we got in the cab. <laughs> that weather was crazy. That weather was crazy. Like it came out of nowhere. You saw lightning. The next thing you know, like niggas just dumped. I got caught on the bridge. Dumped buckets, buckets of water on us all day for like an hour straight. I'm like, yo, flooding everywhere. I feel bad for dudes who's on their motorcycles. Yo, we passed by a couple dude, of, especially in Brooklyn. Yeah, we passed by a couple of motorcycle people. Um, on a, they, they had to find refuge on a like little passageways on a, um Jackie Robinson. Um, and it's crazy. It, know, know what it is? Cause yesterday wasn't expected rain. Right. It was like a hundred thousand degrees, and um. Everybody do it. <laughs> when you don't see the people walking around with umbrellas, nah, you know it wasn't set on the news. It's safe, so a lot of people yesterday got caught in the rain. Could you see when you was dropped? It was crazy yeah. for like a good old. hour. They pulled over too. You, you keep right, yeah. Out of yeah. full blast. It was kind of crazy, man. It was kind of crazy, man. But um, overall, it was good. Yeah. It, by the time we got there, it slowed down. We was chilling. And um, we just got highs. Hey, yo. Oh, hey. They, what they had, like, um. Red. Not red. Oh, Burst crazy. I'm thinking about something else different. He said, Burgers. He said, the guard. He said, the guard. We had ribs. Nah, I didn't even say that. That was a mistake, <laughs> man. <laughs> that was a different barbecue. That was a different barbecue. My bad. Nah, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was the beef glizzies. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey yo, we had a, we had a meat on a stick. Quite hey quickly. yo, and we had chicken on a stick. <laughs> chicken, chicken on a stick. stick too. Yeah, chicken on a stick, and um some some burgers. Burgers. Yeah, we was in yeah. savage mode last yeah, night. Definitely. definitely was in savage mode last. Had some night. salad. I didn't eat nothing this time. I was straight salad. Looks smoky to me though. I didn't. Let but me get, look, look, everybody get, ate it though. Let me get the burgers. I, you know. Let me get the burgers. <laughs> Let me get, I'm not gonna lie to you. When Seasoned you, burgers, pause. <laughs> you know what was good about being over there? That it that it was like mad older people there. Like we was like, there wasn't no kids there really. Yeah. And like, so people was eating hot dogs without feeling ashamed. No, <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know, you know a young kids, they like, bread. you in a, you in a glitzy? <laughs> 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 so everybody was kind of like eating very normal, not looking, Looking suspicious, yeah. You know, looking suspicious. You like, damn. Like, you know what? You remind me, young kids. You got, you got to turn around and, and face the other way and shit like that. Taking that, that age, I'm a big gobble that glitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I eat hot dogs anywhere too. Word, I'm not yeah. gonna lie to you. Whatever. But the young, the young kids do be having jokes when they are around. Word. They do be having jokes when they're around. So you gonna eat that? <laughs> oh, man. Give me those. You complaining? Yo, it's crazy, but yo, Rod, man, yo. um, we, what we, what, what happened? We started playing um darts. Darts, yeah. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm actually good he's, in darts. He's good. He's good. I'm actually good in darts. And it was when I saw the board, I was automatically attracted to that shit. Like, oh yeah, said, I gotta, gotta play. play this shit, man. And um, I'm not gonna lie to you, Rod. You was inside at this point, and it's yeah. no bullshit. But I threw a bullseye, bullseye, mm, bullseye. Um, um, the, I, I, I wouldn't even doubt it. The young kid that was there, the young kid that was there, he actually seen it, and I actually made noise and shit like that because I was ecstatic. <laughs> yeah. Um, I threw a bullseye, but let's get back to, to this game. So me and the guard playing bullseye. I'm trying to give him some some tips on how to how to how to throw more efficiently and how how I do it. You know what yeah. I mean? So we fucking with the board and shit. And yo, I threw one of the darts at the board. It bounced off and fell next to the bike. We heard it hit the floor. Yep. We asked, I saw, I seen where it went. It was by the bike. I thought, I'm gonna keep it a thousand with you. I thought <laughs> it was by the bike. Yep. Yo, what happened, God? Yo, it wasn't by the bike. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't on the floor. It wasn't on the corner. It wasn't, yo, it was gold. Yo. Mm -hmm. Only the feather piece of it was left. That's it. That's all that was left. That was it. And no lie to you, we looked crazy. Looking for it. We looked crazy. 
We really was looking for that shit. We got other people to help us look for that Pull shit. Pull out their flashlights with us. And we, yeah, we all had our phones, flashlights on, and we could not find it. So, and even at the end of the night, it's like, <laughs> we stopped fucking with that for like two hours. Yeah. We was eating, we was chilling in the back. After we chilled and the bar was closing, it was only us, the dude that um was um, um managing the bar that night, the yeah. security guard, and like three of us. And we continued to, to look, look for that it. shit for like a good 40 minutes, maybe yeah. half an hour, 40 minutes. Still couldn't find it. The bar was empty at that point. Checking so, the same spots we didn't check already just to make sure we ain't. No, misses miss nothing. We didn't check the garbage. The garbage Yo. wasn't even like next to there. Yeah, we checked the garbage just in case it didn't bounce somewhere. It was crazy. It was crazy. So we came up with this. I came up with this. Um, I came up with what really happened yesterday. I came up with my own reasoning of what happened yesterday. I'm going to say this, man. I think that the dark went to... Another dimension. <laughs> now, I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> I feel I feel crazy that we couldn't find the dark. Yo, that was crazy. I can't. I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel crazy that I couldn't find this motherfucking dark, and we really couldn't find this dark. Searching, and we had everyone searching for this dog Yo, last the night Wayne Gay song. searching and searching Yo, we you might have hit a target in another world bro Yo, i think somebody got hit i said the same thing i said if we went to the holes out in the monkey doggy land yeah so with that yo that's what we actually was saying like yo somewhere else in another dimension that shit hit a bullseye send it back send it back <laughs> yeah somebody 10 months from down the line discovered under an x-ray they got hit in the back with it Oh, Ooh. shit. Ooh. Might have pinned it on somebody. They don't realize they got hit. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. It that's could it could happen. Check my body. Man, mm -hmm. we going to get hit. <laughs> we going to get hit with the one day, one day in a day rule. <laughs> <laughs> somebody got pissed. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact, man. That's a fact. It was fine. It's definitely, hey, listen, man, I'm with it all, man. It could have went another dimension. Yeah. These days, speaking of like that type oh, of shit, right? Yeah. Speaking of that type of shit, and this is like actually my man Woody Wood is the person who actually brought this up, right? Okay, Wood. Wood. Yeah. He said this would be a good topic to speak about. Speaking of like other dimensions and crazy shit happening, you this week. An ex-military intelligence officer claimed the government has been concealing a program that retrieves and reverse engineers UFOs. Retired Major David Grush testified in Congress. Yes. Yes, sir. That's real shit. And take we I testified for that's kind of he was in front of he was in um he testified that because he was like um I think that they kicked him out like um for like being a leak mm. you know what I mean the whistle they about to put a hit on him soon well uh, you never know they did that to the dude that did the what's that that contra he was. Oliver North in the blue government is when they tell you they put a hit on they saw yeah. something yeah. That means they didn't see nothing. Yeah. <laughs> mm. When you... they don't speak is when it's really going down. Mm -hmm. So they probably, you know, that's probably just to cover up what's really going on, man. Other things are going on, and they probably try to, you know, get us to look at this and shit, focus on this so we don't focus on that. It's called the media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's crazy, man, because um, he actually said, they, they the, one of the questions that they asked him was, did you find remains? Did they find remains? Right. And the answer was yes. yes. He found them. Yeah, they yeah. got ships and all that. They said they found remains and that it wasn't human. Right. Then they asked him, was it human? And he said he ain't at liberty to talk about Oh, yeah. Oh, my oh, bad. Yeah. That part he wasn't at liberty to talk about. But when you say you're not at liberty to talk about it, Y'all subconsciously it, yeah. just said yeah. yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. I can't yeah. confirm all this. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I can't talk about that right now. That's that's crazy. Uh, I'm I'm going to say this. Have anyone here ever had um, any sightings of UFOs? You think? I sure have. Speak to me, man. Speak to me, uh, brother. Listen, I had three experience, two experiences that I know for sure that I seen. Uh, I seen that we spoke about this before. The, the you know the triangle shaped ship with the three thrusters in the back. I saw it over the cross, the Bronx, cross Bronx, and um somebody else saw it as well. My coworker, because we spoke about it the next day. So we, you know, we went and uh, we spoke about it, and we actually mentioned and. Uh, we described the same thing that we saw. It was about four and change. It was about four p.m. and change. So we saw it. We saw it going to the. Hey, we yo. saw. Oh, hey, yo! We just saw it going to the clouds. All right. So you know what I'm saying. So that was one of my experiences that I know for a fact. I know what I saw. You know, and it was uh when you see these things, you f you know, like you feel shocked, like you looking at it and you don't know what you're looking at. You know what I'm saying? But you know it's there. So that was one of my experiences. You know what I'm saying? Anybody else? Not that I could remember. Maybe they took away my memory if I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe with that dark. Sure. I I think I think like some of some of the connects for the weed, they probably like some marshes or something. Cause after you smoke, you probably don't remember nothing, son. Definitely. Well, I don't know. We can smoke out of this world stuff. Yeah. A lot of things we take on face value yeah. every day is an unidentified flying object. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Tell me that that story. I, I had an experience. I had two experiences. I had two. I had, I had two UFO experiences, man. Um, and they both happened in Winsburg while I was in Winsburg, and they both happened after me coming home from prison. So about 13 years ago, maybe between 11 and 13 years, between 13 and 11, that's bad. <laughs> between 2010 and 2012. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the period. <laughs> the, between those years, I was on block two for one of these um, sightings and I was with other people and I actually, while telling Woody the story, I actually called up one of the people that was there. This is like to show and prove, like, was it something I, I seen? And um, so it was a few of us there. We were on block two. And we seen, like, it was something, I want to say, like, triangle-ish. <laughs> I can't, I, that's the best way I could describe it. I'm not going to say it was a triangle, but it was triangle-ish, you know? Because you can't really see it, like, like like in full form, you're gonna see like a, a silhouette-ish of it. So it was triangle-ish, it had three lights on the bottom of it. And it moved from one place to another, like in like light speed time. And it moved back again, boom. It did it again to the point that it got all of our attention, that we was all looking up like, yo, what the fuck is that? And everybody's like in, in awe. Now, the person who I called and said, like, was you there? He said, you know what's crazy about that? After I left y'all, I went to the roof later, and I was on the roof later, and I seen that shit again. Right? Now, the same person was with me for another sighting. Right? And now this happened on Block 3 in Winsburg. And it was a lot of people there, like 40 people on a block, if not more. And it was some shippish shit. It wasn't no airplane. <laughs> it wasn't no airplane. Because if you know, if you're from Wayansburg, you know that you start seeing the belly of planes from where we at. We're close to JFK. Yes, sir. I can't explain what I mean by that, but... A lot of planes go over Wandsburg specifically because it's in the direction of JFK. Wherever it was in the landing pad. So when you see planes, you could see it. Like you don't it don't, it don't look like no shit like like that's in the oh, like yeah. a dot in the sky or some shit like that. Nah. The plane, the plane. Yeah, you see it like you see it on a down, on a dot on a down. And we seen this shit, right? Uh, and it was 
different from the other shit, <laughs> right? It wasn't that same thing, but in, in this one, it had like some red fire shit trailing behind it, right? And it came from Block One, if people know what I'm talking about, it, um, it came from Block One, it was coming towards us, right? So, you know, as I said, we in the, like the path of the plane shit. Mm -hmm. So automatically, you know, I'm thinking plane, but it caught everyone's attention. Like this shit, like, so we could see it, but not see it though. I can't explain that as I yeah. said. But you could see the object and it had no wings. You know what I mean? So it wasn't a plane, God. And it had this fire trailing behind it. It looked like fire. I can't say it was fire. You know, in the Bible, they talk about the, the, the flaming chariot and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and it was like some fire yeah, shit. Yeah. It was some fire shit. I, that's why I said I can't even describe the, 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 what it was because it wasn't an airplane. I can tell you that. Yeah. It wasn't, it, it didn't have no wings. So it was a saucer-ish type of thing. <laughs> And it had red flame, not fire, like fire. It was just like a red flame, a red. The red glow. Yeah, behind it, <laughs> behind it. And it went away from us towards like Metropolitan. Like it was going towards like the, the Cooper tanks, if you know what I'm talking about. It was going towards the Cooper tanks and everyone was watching it. Like it was like, it, it, it made everyone, you couldn't deny that that's shit. what it was. So that was my two experiences with UFOs. Oh, un, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna say spaceships. Unidentified flying objects. There you go. Yeah. That's it. It's crazy, know. man. I don't, know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Shit is happening these days. Motherfuckers is admit, admitting to shit. Now they admit to it. After all these years, they are Reliving the day time right now where they it's go. the fact that government can't conceal or uh, right. actually uh, whatever they dealing with behind the scenes ain't cooperating with them no more. Yeah, you, mm. you know what I'm saying? It's like a hard-headed child that don't want to listen. Whatever they behind the scenes doing, whatever them, whatever ET, whatever they dealing with, whatever, <laughs> I don't know. I, I've never seen a Martian, but I can go into the science of Martians, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just feel, right? So I, I don't really like to speculate, but whatever they fucking with, they ain't cooperating with them no more. That's what happens. The human see me, whatever. So what? Yeah. That's what's going on, man. You know, a lot of not, things. Not going so by the, the ritual code. And like, yo, it's yeah, supposed to. Like so now, when we were looking crazy, the government knew. But now the government looking crazy. Because those, those whatever deities or whatever you want to call them, they cooperate. So we see it all around. That's crazy. Can't deny it because it's a lot of people coming forth. There's a lot of people with the phones, bro, with phones and everything. Yeah. And it's, you know, yeah, you can't escape that. That back then in the 80s, we didn't have flip phones or any of that stuff. Yeah, you know, people were skeptical. Now, but now we got phones. Yeah. Who was aware of it? Yeah, it's true. You got footage surfacing with, uh, there was this female in the newspaper on the phone, flip phone in 1964. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. see, shit, people yeah. like, yeah, yeah. 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 It's a real it's time. The real so, phone. Girl, girl travel, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. so you'd be surprised, you know. who be surprised. <laughs> They've been lying to us since day one. Day one. Of course. Cover up. Anunnaki shit. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you know all them people are like. Tell the truth, it's taboo now. Yeah. yeah. Tell the truth. Yo, oh, well, there's any UFO right now I think you see, it has to do with the military industrial complex. I think they building all these ships and they're going to use that to bring in the World War Three, you know what I'm saying? Instead of everybody being against one another, it's going to be, you know, us against them type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? With that, they're going to make a lot of money. World War Three. I mean, they're killing us with the biochemical warfare. Oh, for oh, sure, yeah. brother, for sure. Sleeping, drinking, that's the World War Three right there we going through right now. We speculate, think, like, we're going to see tanks and planes. they like, nah, just like that dot. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anthrax. More cancer. Put the HIV to the side. Boopus. 
lice, take over the green worms, take the green worm back. <laughs> 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 they switch it up. They're just experimenting on us. Lyme disease. I object. Okay. We inhale it. We drink it. We eat it every day subconsciously. You know, and um, when you say you saw something in the sky that gets you all, oh, he's 730, he crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the truth don't need no apology, man, you know, so. Of course. Yo, I, I, you know, you hear my brother back there speaking my wine and brother. Oh, uh, uh, let me, let me, let's get into, you know, let's get off this fucking out of space out shit. Out of space shit. And get into some real game shit. You heard? Let's land back to Earth over here. You know, one of my one of my good friends is, you know, is is dope to that. I know this person. I me and him spoke years. You know, we've known each other for a little while now. So, um, but when I first came into his presence, I had to tell him like I seen the J Lo tag from a child. You know what I mean? I come from that same time. He's like a year or two older than me, but. We was doing a lot of similar things when it come to the graph shit, the polo shit. I was lying about my age. I'm like six years old. Yeah. <laughs> and the God and the God been putting down graph wise. I'm gonna say putting down period in all forms of fashion. But what introduced me to the person was the graph. And uh, I'm a person who write graffiti too. My man Woody Wood does the same thing too. Um, Raw ain't a graph writer. I'm not a graph writer, but I'm a connoisseur of graph because I like I like graph. Like I could tell you different people. No, I I I, could, I know what I, what I'm looking at. You know, some people are like, oh, what's that? Drawing on the wall. Have you noticed? Yes and no. Depends. Right. Right. Just you. Yeah. I embraced it for the last forty years. In yeah. the the guard the guard you know as the, as the you know as I said this is J Lo man number one your father. Boy, he did it. Yeah, right. Original J Lo from the block. Jennifer Lopez was and thought about and let it go. Was ten years later, under original. She stole it from him, man. She stole it from him. Actually, Abby D gave it. And and I'm not gonna lie to you. When I was young, if you ride the L train, he was heavy in them tunnels. If you saw the green garbage trucks, and how I got introduced to J Lo tag was the green garbage trucks. From the projects, if you'll know, you'll know. My name was everywhere the crackhead was selling ass for five dollars. Yo, I'm not gonna lie to you. Every time they changed the green garbage can on Block Three in Winsburg, it had a J Lo with the dollar sign and the O on that shit. And I remember conversations with my man um, Taz. Shout out to my man Taz, bro, who has matching like. You never know. He might be coming home soon. No, you never know. Should be, you know. Should be happening. But that's my man though. Um, and he he like it was a conversation with him about the tag J Lo. And he was like, he described J Lo, right? But I don't think that he as a matter of fact, he was right and wrong. Cause now I know who J Lo is. He is half half. He made like it was just a Puerto Rican dude. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yo, this is a, this is a Puerto Rican nigga from like this. Puerto Rican, man. I'm just light skinned, man. My mom's is Filipino, pops is black. I came out looking like this. <laughs> like, like this. Yeah. And, and that's what my man said. He's like, he's a Spanish dude. Yeah, I got that all my life, man. And we heard he was a low life too. You yeah, know what I mean? Where the name came from. Right, man, I embraced it from the low lives, you know? So tell me for the people. You know, we don't do interviews. We nah. we, we just hanging out. Hey, bro. We just hanging out. Like it is. But my man, for the for our audience that may not know your story, man, let's let's go a little bit into your origins, and that's Brownsville. Okay. Give me a little bit about your Brownsville origins. My Brownsville origins. I lived in Brownsville since 1974. Growing up, the gangs was fading out. The crack was moving in. When the crack moved in, I didn't care for it. But at the same time, when the crack moved in, there was a lot of teenagers at that time. We say 82 between 84, more into the scroll and their names on the wall. That caught my eye. You know what I'm saying? My mom was trying to keep me away from it, but just like a dope fiend and heroin addict, I had to have it. <laughs> so I got caught up in that instead of the drug trade. Everybody I grew up with got caught with the drugs, some with the prostitution, some with the just drinking. I picked up the magic walking paint. And I've been running with it for years, you know. And um, my name wasn't always J-Lo. It was Jack M-O-G. 
Okay, because those men were so you know, those, those are the folks that inspire me, the MOG crew. Shout it out the Cedo, MOG, Heiser, rest in peace, all the pies, all the rest in peace. You know, broke a bus, my man, Jill, MOG. That's how I got caught up in that. And uh, you know, growing up, everybody would be like, you know, tell my mom, yo, he writing on the wall, he writing on the trucks. God, I could be doing something now. You understand what I'm saying? So growing up in Brownsville, I was one of the first to really just dominate Brownsville. When I dominated Brownsville, every other graffiti artist was out and about in different neighborhoods. But I stayed in Brownsville because when I started, I was between 10 and 12. Can't go nowhere. Can't go nowhere. So I dominated Brownsville heavy, heavy, heavy. And when people met me, they was like, this little bastard right here? Yeah. <laughs> Can't go nowhere. So I dominated Brownsville. And as I got older, uh, it became um, it became like a, a habitual thing. So I killed Brownsville, like 40 block buses on the L line, 40 block buses going uptown. And every time, this is something y'all don't hear about in graffiti, but I'm going to give it to y'all. Because when you put a real graffiti artist on here versus an internet one, you're going to hear some crazy shit. When I used to ball, I used to have prostitutes and crackheads with me. You understand? <laughs> Where by the average graffiti dude, always went bombing with graffiti right? When I always kept a prostitute with me or a heroin at it. Why? Because if you give them $5, they got your back, your name going to be A with me. <laughs> and plus, the pussy was cheap back then. It was <laughs> oh, before $40 of Netflix and chill. Wow. And the Halle Berry crackheads before they were zombies. <laughs> 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 you would never get that set for no more. I don't give a fuck if you on TikTok, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram. The pussy I came across. Let me tell y'all the real science about J Lo on the block. We ain't talking about Jenny. We talking about the real J Lo. I stayed with a badass crackhead with low self esteem. You dig? <laughs> and a broke one. I'm talking about. <laughs> listen, picture Halle Berry in her prime, lean on in her prime. I'm getting head for two dollars and burned out buildings. Damn right, I was nice with it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know why my head is straight? Because everything I did was just straight to it. Mm. Straight. Mm. Fucking before pubic hair. <laughs> 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 That's how I was in Brown Girl, man. You know, from dope fiends to dope teens, you did. And um, I don't regret it, you know, because these crackheads and dope fiends taught me a lot as I grew up. They told me, listen, man. The pussy you gonna run into after this? For this job. <laughs> okay, it's gonna be different. That shit gonna come on responsibilities yep. and headaches. You see, because the pussy I was with only came with $2 and $5, and that was it. <laughs> my name up, everybody wondered who this man was who was actually a kid. Jay Lo. So, you know, like I said, there's no regrets, man. Shout out to all 10 of my kids and six grandkids. Yo. Because from that, you get this. You understand? 30 years of marriage. This is what the dope thing started to be. Wow. So what I did was took their positive lives that they couldn't fucking put out there, and I implemented it in my life. So you want to get high, put needles in your own? Fine. I know what not to do. And I took that shit with me and ran. And man, shout out to them. Man, dope fans who got out the day. That's what I asked live age like J-Lo. Better not say my name. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, um... <laughs> Speaking about Brownsville, yeah, Brownsville, a lot of street legends come out of Brownsville. Yes, a lot of street legends. Yes, yes. You got uh, you got Shannon Briggs, Mike Tyson, uh, Thurston Howell from the Low Life, mm -hmm. the whole boot camp clique. Man, you got MOP. You got so many, so many boxes out there, man. You got um, uh, you got Danny Jacobs, man. You had Pearl Washington. You know, rest in peace. You had uh, old Dirty Master came from Brownsville. A lot of people don't know that, man. You had, uh, oh, man, it was just so many. The amazing one and only Art Bark, man. Rest oh, in peace. Man. You see education of Sonny Garth. Facts. You feel me? A lot of original. You got the original J. Lo from Brownsville. I ain't gonna... Yo, so I wanted to continue not to cut your wisdom, Indeed. but Art Bar's nephew is Facts on Wax. A lot of people don't know that when he told me that shit, that's his mother's brother. 
and like it blew my mind. He's like, yeah. Um, he said I took a picture in, in front of the school. He's like, you in front of my, you in front of my family shit. I'm like, huh? Hey, Medina, Medina. <laughs> I said, oh, wow. This is shout out to my man, Fax on Wags, man. <laughs> Yo, so Brownsville, you know, there's a show, you know, speaking about Brownsville, there's a show um, or there's a YouTube channel that St. Laz um, do. And it's, shout out to St. Laz. Yo, shout out to St. Laz, man. I've been watching all your joints recently, man. Just watched the joint on uh, my man, Shy Wells. That was a great, great, great storytelling that you did. Every story. But um, so you know, you was on St. Laz joint twice. Yeah, I definitely was on it. Talk to talk to our peoples a little bit about that, man, because that was big. All right, right. Well, my first one on St. Laz was uh about me being in Brooklyn House of Detention. Everybody got Ryan Gonzalez stories, but nobody really had stories about being in the tombs or the north and south side of Navy Yard where it was really popping, okay? There was times on Brooklyn House where you was begging to go to Rikers, okay? I was begging because I went in Brooklyn House during a time where that shit was like, people thought it was laid back. No, you go to Brooklyn House back then, you go there, you go to medical, they put you in the auditorium and you watch a videotape of the, what the dudes and not, and that's it. It ain't like Rikers, you're going through the A gate and the B gate. You're going straight in there, B. And when you go in there, there's 30 people in there, man, that's already family except you. 15 on the uppers, 15 on the lowers. A side all the way to D side. First floor all the way to the 10th floor. You know what I'm saying? And, and there, when I got to Brooklyn House, Brooklyn House changed my life forever because all these years I've been in the streets fighting I thought I was fighting until I got in the jailhouse and realized that when you fight in there, it's when the house say it's over. Mm. I thought after I won, it was over. Nah, you go back in there and fight more. What do you mean? I won. Nah, you didn't win. Fight some more, bro. We going to pluck you out. So now my non-fighting ass, right, because I'm not a fighter. Well, at that time, I was, and I fucked you up, man. I wasn't a fighter. <laughs> Uh, they forced me to learn how to, we fought near till motherfuckers was throwing up on each other. Mm -hmm. You heard? I mean, we biting each other in the face. And I said on the same last show, I was fighting a Spanish dude in uh, the back, right? It's 15 cells on the up, 15 on the bottom, right? We was all the way in the back fighting quietly. You know why? Because that's the stupid shit that the house is encouraging. Fight some more, bro. Fight some more. And every time we gave up, they stick us with like crocheting needles or a little shank. Not enough to draw blood, but enough to us to be in a fight like this. <laughs> and so until you shit it on yourself and throw up, you ain't uh, been in the fight. Facts. You ain't been Great. in the fight, man. Me and Duke biting each other, crying and shit in each other's arms. We fighting. It's different. I never heard that on Rikers. So I immediately was hoping my name would get called after court to go to Rikers. No. When I got remanded, back to Brooklyn House. That's crazy. Brooklyn House. Yeah, I was in. I went to. I went to Brooklyn House back in the days, man. Cells. I was on the cells. I, I'm not mistaken with cells. Mm -hmm. High windows oh, all the way, all the way up to the top. Like the windows, you can't look at the windows. They all the way on the top. Mm -hmm. Um, and back then the floors used to mean something. Like different yeah, floors. Yeah, yeah, I mostly every time I went. A high, I was in a high number. Yeah, I always yeah. went to. Uh, <laughs> Well, for a stabbing, I was put on the 10th floor. I always stayed on either 7 or 6. And they always kept me on the D side. You know what I'm saying? The D side was like anybody that was in there that had like bail. You know, like if I had a uh, $5,000 bail, they keep most of the bail people on the D side. Um, I really couldn't talk too much about the A and C side, but that's how Brooklyn was. And then Staten Island be all on the 4th and 5th floor. That's a fact. Yo, they couldn't put Staten Island up on the higher floors because dudes in there... The politics at that time was so arrogant, B. Arrogant. It's nothing like Rikers Island, man. That's Brooklyn House was gladiator school. I, I, yeah, back then, I, I went to Brooklyn House back then, and definitely dudes were trying to go to Rikers Island. And Navy Yard, you was dying just to go home, B. Navy Yard went up to the uh, four floors. They had a uh, south side and a north side, and that shit was like a dungeon, B. You know what I'm saying? That shit had the slots for real. You can go in there, you can have a bunkie or be four on the fucking dorm, or you can have your Fodolo shit, whatever they put you, but 
the, the um, I say the worst jail I've been in because I've never been to prison. Worst jail was Navy Yard. Navy Yard, the rape shit was real. The knocking you out, taking your ass shit was real. Man. This is during a time, you know, uh, shit, late teens. They was accepting you. You know what I'm saying? I think it closed down in nine three, nine four, if I'm mistaken. Yeah, I missed the I missed the Navy Yard. That's crazy. Navy Yard in ninety two, B. I missed the Navy Yard. I, I started then going to prison, I believe, ninety three, mm -hmm. ninety four. So I missed the Navy Yard. I heard about it. But you can get some pussy in Navy Yard. That's right. They closed that shit. <laughs> hey, wherever they insecure, I'm with it, me. Yo, um, mm -hmm. also outside of the doing the same last year, you was also. One of the hosts on the Van Du Hour, you know, um, we were actually went to California together. Yes, sir. Great, great experience. We went to about 20 different states, man. I say 10 going and 10 coming back. And um, <clears throat> I was the main, the main culprit in the whole thing because I uh, went out there to paint to represent for New York. You know, we had a couple of other writers with us. And uh, so when they were doing the illegal bomb and I had to fall back to, uh, because if I got caught, we had no show, you know? So uh, we had fun, man. Some dudes was out there racking. They gonna stole 80 motherfucking cans of paint, laptops, jackets. We went through Minnesota. It was cold. Everybody had jackets going. Uh, <laughs> we went to a Wild Wilds, made our own sandwiches and left out. Oh, man, it was crazy. The racism was crazy when we was at Idaho. Mm. Uh, it was just crazy. But our racism was dope. Like, the shit we went through shouldn't really be televised. But when they tried to get racist with us, we was on side. I fucked you up. Mm. I fucked you and police up. So they didn't really like New York. We was just crazy. <laughs> we got to Nevada. Nevada. Regardless of Las Vegas, we did mm -hmm. Vegas. But Nevada, the state itself, they welcomed us with just straight pussy at the door, B. All the fat women in Nevada, low self-esteem is at a low, low time high. <laughs> time low time high. A low time high. I had beautiful fat women that were just ready to give up the goddamn sheesh, the carbon dioxide legs. That's what I call it for rubbing so much. You know, though. Down there, down there. <laughs> yeah, one chick wanted to take me home and shit, man, but I was like, nah. I'm going to stay with the crew, you know, uh. Motherfuckers is fucking in the pool. What? Yo. I mean, not me, but it was people in general out there fucking in the pool. Hey, yeah. You had dudes out there looking at us like, damn, no dudes are different. And all the women, I, man, I kid you not, man. I got 10 witnesses, man. The women went crazy when they found out we was from New York. The pussy was just there. That's usually how it happens with yeah, it was New York. You know, it was dead. Over the, I like fat women, so while the whole <laughs> yeah. team is over there with the beautiful women, I was in the low self-esteem section, the low self-esteem section with all the big women that just wanted to hear everything I had to say. He he, he loved all the fluffy women. The fluffy women. Yeah. Sucking on each other. The fluffy women. For the pussy. <laughs> yeah, I remember the cop coming over there like, where, where y'all from? I'm like, New York. He was like, okay, I figures. You know, to see all these big women twerking and shit, man. New York sure know how to make it party. Yep. That's what it is, man. Yeah, Everywhere we go. Van Du Hour, you know, uh, we went on that trip, LAX to New York. Mm. Um, That changed my life crazy because it, that was the turning point when I started to see big money. And so I had to look back at mathematics like, you don't create a monster. You know, and I, he subconsciously created a monster because when I work with mathematics, I do it sincerely from the heart and just the label. But what comes with that is a lot of work, commission. Uh, you're going to get groupies and fans. <laughs> you're going to get spectators and speculators. That's like, yo, what is the shit you fucking with J-Lo? It wasn't until you went on that trip. You did X, Y, and Z. Listen, I don't know. We was in the motherfucking deserts. I don't know what jumped in me. We were in places. Hey, we yo. were in Area 51 where the fucking feds rolled up on us and was like, what y'all doing over here? And they was excavating dinosaur bones. We don't know what jumped from us. <laughs> oh, boy, <laughs> Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> I got back to New York. Everybody in New York was like, J-Lo, you in the Source magazine painting in California. I was like, what? It was already in the sauce before I got back to New York. Yeah, we made we made the sauce magazine. <laughs> so 
You had no, big things. Full time being in there, but this time that's a fact. in there without me knowing. And I just started thinking the biggie, smiling every time my face is in the sauce, like. Yo, and the shot that they have of the like the front of our article is like J Lo on the top of the wall, hanging with the pay. Yeah. And he's right in New York to LAX in the in in the in the picture. And I gotta tell you, man, the Vandal Hour took care of me. This is why the people got crazy. Because when I went, there were clothing lines sponsoring me. All Facts. paid up, hotel paid up. Fuck it. Everything I wanted was paid up. Everything. I'm like, yo, I was feeling like a rapper on tour. And we still boosted. Yeah, <laughs> right. And, and and we met a we met a Mexican dude out there who actually Facts. was a gangbanger of graffiti on Facts. He wrote them at we, we he started hanging with us for the week and took us all over Cali, man. He was showing us the ends of the house, man. I miss that dude. Yo, that was the fact. He took us through he took us through some hoods. Um the first night that we I got there, because they actually got there before I did. I came later. And when I got there, we went all went to like we had our first show was in Burbank. Yeah. So we went to Burbank. It was in a bar. We didn't have a lot of people come out. Let me say this. We put together our own tour. This wasn't like a tour like, you know, we got signed or something. Nah, we put together our own tour. And our first stop was in Burbank at this bar. And uh, it was like, no lie to you, some like real hillbilly looking type <laughs> bar. But we, we, we you know, we going to have fun wherever the fuck we at. We had some police action. That's... That's the uh, fact. Uh, dudes, dudes, dudes went crazy over there across the street from the spot. Oh, right across the street? Yeah, right, right across the street. I'm the one that almost got caught. This is when le weed wasn't legal. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> left like a pound next to my face, right? What? While the helicopter was going around and the police was trying to figure where they ran, right? Mm -hmm. I was stuck in the van with the door wide open. I said, if I don't close this door, they know I'm in here. So I was trying to close it, but the cop was moving the flashlight and I'm laying there like, all right, if they catch me, it's whatever. I'm just laying there. I turned my head and saw a whole blasted bag full of weed. I tried to blow it like, <laughs> feel like you're going to go go on to jail, man. And so I closed it a little bit. She still was looking. I kind of rolled out because I'm only five feet five, right? <laughs> when I rolled out, I closed the door. I looked gay when I did it. I closed it like this. <laughs> and it went click. I didn't want it to make the car noise. Mm -hmm. And I rolled over like real fucking fall guy, MacGyver shit, and dipped in the car while everybody was eating and smoking. Like, oh, you good, bro? Yo, it was cr it was crazy. It, we was bombing. Somebody called the police. Uh, it was crazy, man. Shout out to my um to my Mexican man. I gotta I gotta yeah. find out his the name. I forgot his name. Uh, on Instagram. Um, buddy. That's a fact. That's a fact. And oh, he's a vet. He's a Van Du Hour guard, you know. Um, we also was out there with my man from Gowanus Projects who moved out there. I forgot the guard name. Cito. Oh, man. My man Cito. He was a black Dominican. Oh, man. And that, he had us in the projects that had waterfalls and pools. It, it was called the Medici. Medici houses. Now, you know what's crazy? Because I watch a lot of California podcasts. And the name of the spot, someone said it. Like, Tiger was living in or something like that. And they was like, the Medici. I was like, the Medici. Yeah. Downtown LA, man. That's a fact, though. And um, what you call it? They had a pool and all that. Yo, that was a funny. I forgot about that. When we took the pictures. <laughs> when we took the pictures. He came in there looking like, these motherfuckers is like, pool ready. We fully clothed coming into the pool every other <laughs> Like from New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the trip was beautiful, man. We only had one problem in uh, we had one problem in uh, in Cali uh, when my man Vito had his New York hat tilted to the right side, oh. and the Mexican dude said sub dumb, and Vito was like, "What, man? Vito speaks bad again? <laughs> Fuck out of here!" And the Mexican dude was like, "Yeah." All right. Oh, he, it got yo, no lie to you. It got kind of crazy. It was outside of our second gig. <laughs> the motherfucker came out the hill. Yo, the hills got us. Like yo, what's up? Yeah, we oh, we not here. We not here for that, man. We here for some art shit. My man Vito, like fuck that. Nah, I don't give a fuck. Fuck all that. I'm like Vito, chill. Yo, bro. we we was in front of our event. It was got. We had a few situations. 
I just gotta say this because people won't believe it, but I gotta say this, man, because this really happened. We got in a federal building. I ain't gonna tell you which one because they might come back for my ass. Yeah. And went through the metal detectors with ice picks and fucking breath. <laughs> 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 we made it through. That shit still work. <laughs> what you say to it? My man Vito dropped his shit when he went through the metal detectors. And as soon as it hit the floor, they had a situation with an inmate in there, which caused all the police to go that way, leaving us at the mm. metal detectors. That saved Vito. Mm. It was his belt buckle, which was actually a knife. Mm. And it fell apart when he went through because he had on these big Section 8 shorts and shit from fucking forming, forming mills or something. <laughs> oh, oh, man. That shit fell yeah. apart in the metal detective, man. And the police, as soon as it hit the floor... Police was already en route to go do something to uh, ascertain some dude that was in cuffs already. So we had a good time, man. You know, and uh, I will never forget that trip. Like I said, that has a lot to do with my um early beginnings in the art game right now. So S Street Media definitely will give you that push. If but see, everybody won't know how to utilize every tool handed to them. You know, you could give somebody a hammer, he won't know how to really build something unless he take it and study. And, and learn the ends and the outs of what that particular tool do. So when S Street Media kept giving me a lot of the publicity, mm. I had niggas from Yemen hit me up. Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam, yo. Do you do smoke shops? I'm like, uh, yeah. I ain't never did a smoke shop in my life. You pay smoke shops? How much you charge? I was like, hmm. You can give me 8000 but I'll tell you. <laughs> I ain't 5000 to you, I... So when they gave it to me for $5,000, I said, man, I'm about to paint this smoke shop for five grand. I got three more. Make price lower. I was like 4000 for the next three. <laughs> I said, damn, S3 Media, I mean, there do I was doing it. That's what it is. And I, I did one smoke shop and bought a truck, did another smoke shop, bought a car. I said, you know what? I'm like a drug deal in the 80s. This is serious. And so, you know, a lot of the people looking at me like, yo, that Van Der Waal shit you fuck with, Bye -bye. what is that, some New World Order shit? What is that? <laughs> Not fine. You was never like that, bro, till you got back. And I got to admit, I don't know. See, some things are just bigger than us. And and uh, I don't never perpetuate that I got this, you know, real understanding that I got self-knowledge of self and all that. But when I did come back, I don't know what in the mountains got in me. Mm -hmm. But something spiritually just took over me when I got back and I just went crazy because my own crew, YNN, Ink Masters, is like, Jay Law is out there doing it. And my wife looking at me like, you sure you ain't selling drugs? I'm like, no, this ain't drugs. <laughs> oh, she had to come out to see for herself. She thought it was another bitch. <laughs> She thought it was trick. I'm like, I ain't that. I said, you'd have knew it was another bitch. If it was another bitch, it wouldn't be no money involved. Because side bitches calls. I don't have my wife know that. And <laughs> so I don't know why she would think my side bitch would be free. So I shouldn't my wife know that. You know, you know, 30 years in the game, you know. So, you know, real pimp type. Yeah. You know, pimp shit. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's. Let's dive in that, into that real quick, man. For the for the people who may not know, my man J Lo had a, a past life um, as a as a ism spitter, you know, his woman getter yeah. type of dude, yeah. and he was in that lifestyle, that P I M P lifestyle. Indeed, I'm still in it, but I'm doing different things now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here to steal a bitch's mind and soul. I'm here to fucking tell a story. And if she could take it and run with it and I could be a good leader, then we all, you know? And instead of these motherfucking chicks out here being manipulated by me, my wife took the shit. So now instead of being stuck with a hoe, I'm stuck with a fucking wife. Yeah. But the one thing about the wife while I've been stuck with her for 30 years is she know how to follow instructions. Therefore, there is no self-destruction. She never crash out. Everything is done right from my clothing line, from... Being fed four course meals a day because fat niggas don't eat three meals. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, that shit is a stereotype. You know, but I definitely was in the pep game. And uh, when I was in it, I was 80 toes down. I had eight women, you know, and uh, the wife was confused. The baby moms didn't like it. Yeah, I got a baby mom from Howard. You know, shout him out to Shawnette. She didn't like it up. Oh, my boy, little trick up. 
And what is wrong with your top bitch? She retarded. Because before we knew what autism was, this is fucked up, but somebody got to tell y'all. <laughs> I had an autistic bitch, right? Real shit. But at the time, autistic wasn't the word they was using in the 90s and 2000s. Don't say that word. Uh, don't say right. The R word. Yeah. Oh, we can't say the R word, but back then it was acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Just know this bitch elevated and go all the way up. But she was beautiful. She looked like Jennifer Lopez at her prime, right? Ooh. And she was already seasoned. See, people think, oh, I go out there manipulating women. And no, 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 no. I only fuck with women that's already go-getters, okay? So those eight women were already in the game. They were seasoned. And what had happened is if you can lead a woman somewhere, they will actually sit down and listen to you. You know what I'm saying? Instead of you trying to fuck them and do this, that, and the third, I had a plan. My plan was we all get cars, we all get some dope houses, live happily ever after. I know it sounds far-fetched until I started manifesting that shit. So when I took and got, when I had four cars, four bitches is like this, motherfucker's the deal. He's the truth. I got four cars, I had two houses. That shit caused the rest of the entourage to get down on board and be like, yo, J-Lo, you know what? I don't know what we doing, but I understand the ism you giving us. You know what I'm saying? So I really didn't want to lean more towards me being a pimp. I never seen it like that. Um, to the untrained eye, I was a pimp. I had the feds on me. <laughs> um, I had my, um, thank God, my bottom chick was just so thorough because when they decided to raid me, uh, they had, she's on my Facebook page and Instagram still, right? They couldn't break her. They had my wife handcuffed. They was like, yo, if you don't answer this, then the third, we're going to take the kids. My kids were babies at the time, right? I raised 10 kids plus two. Mm. Word. And I got six grandkids, mate. No. I had some of the bitches taking my kids to school. I mean, my shit was like that, man. Okay? This ain't that black exploitation shit with the big hat and feather in it. You feel me? Uh, man, what's <laughs> really about that life? You understand what I'm saying? And, and what fucked me up is that. I started perpetuating a life style of trying to be wearing the big jewelry. Y'all see the big rings and shit on my shit and all that, right? The tuxedos, the tailored suits, the Gucci and the Prada. Mm -hmm. That right there, when I started being a clown, that's when the feds got on me. They like, okay, fake ass, ugly bit. And that's how we got on. You know, they started watching me and um, they caught my old girl, uh, Sunshine. Sunshine, shout it out to you, man. She, she, she was, she was just so thorough, man. She would not break, man. They were trying to give me seven years in the feds. You know, my wife says, "I told you, uh, you ain't tell me shit. You was doing they in supporting me." <laughs> <laughs> All right, we thought these bitches live in the crib with dog leashes on their neck. Listen, wife was with me, you know, and so we kept it away from my babies and shit. Right, I kept all this away from the kids, and um. I'm not going to hold you to pimping and the hoeing. It, you know, it started out real tacky with us being in like Hunts Point, East New York. Uh, we played Atlantic City, the promenade, a lot of that. Uh, I even opened up Mother Gaston one night in Brownsville, man. I was mm. fucked up for doing that, but uh, just to yeah. entertain everybody in the Ville, just to show them I had it like that. Yeah. Shout out to B.I. You know what I'm saying? Rest, Rest in peace. peace. You know, uh, B.I. Even though he was younger than me, he was showing me the ends of the outs of the ism. You know, we were uh, opening uh, blades over there in Queens where it wasn't even popping. We was doing 23rd Street and 23rd Avenue in the early uh, 2000s, late 90s. You know, and the money was crazy, man. We were seeing about 1500 a night. Now, that might not be much, but if you're seeing 1500 a night times 30 days in the month, you already know 30,000 times 12, you already know six figures a year. I'm not going to lie to you, back to that, the time you're talking about, um, that shit was on the news. Yeah, it definitely it was, was on the news. That shit was on the news about you that, know. about exactly yeah. what you're talking about, and it was yeah. like gang affiliated. Yeah, like, my, 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 what I'm telling you going to match the time, and it's going to match politics, you know? Man. It's only when you're not truthful about it, it'll be like, so right now, I would have a pep right now on, on watching us saying, that ain't what pep been about. This is what's wrong with them. They think pepping is about manipulating a woman's mind. You know, a motherfucking chick, she does this shit by choice. You don't have to manipulate her. She already know what it is. So, you know, for me to be considering and saying I was a pimp, 
I wouldn't say that. I was just, you know, an uh, entrepreneur who knew a lot of the ends and the outs of the game. You know, started out with crackheads. Mm. Started out with dope fans. Hey, yo, J Lo, I got you. Hold me down, and I would hold them down. Then I became this gorilla pimp because I didn't know what a pimp was. So now I'm on the strip bogong bitch. Yo, you ain't on this track unless I get a cut. <laughs> what? I did that to every renegade. If y'all don't know what a renegade is, that's any motherfucker out there selling a ass with no class who ain't got a pimp. So I was on some gorilla shit like, yo, get the fuck in the vet. Get in the vet or you going to gawk. You don't really help <laughs> <laughs> it. Most of the pimps were bloods at the time. You had the bloods. They was just hitting New York. And the bloods was just kind of confused, man. Like, yo, no, man, you making the shit hot. Hey, I'm not a real pimp. But I got a story. And so, you know, oh, shout it out to everybody. All the sisters on my Facebook and Instagram that was out there getting money with me. Because like I said, these ain't imaginary people. If they want to come forth and shout me out, listen. We really lived it, man. That's the difference between me and all uh, black exploitation ass was internet peps, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, once the feds, you know, once my case was uh, dismissed with a uh, old girl, I got my life together and started implementing the uh, the ism into my heart. Let me ask you a question. That's a cut yeah, your wisdom. You got it. You done met, like, I didn't see you. Um, what's the, the, um, uh, Rogers, T. Rogers, T. Rogers. That's my man. Rest in peace, man. Sure, indeed. So when he when he passed away, I saw the bit T. Rogers. You spoke uh, about you spoke people, about that. My people's flew him in. Um, I was down with a clandestine Masonic lodge in Harlem, and T. Rogers was down with a Masonic lodge called International Masons. That's another set of Freemasons. And when they came together, we flew T. Rogers in. He wanted clarity on OG Mac because. T. Rogers was getting a lot of heat for when the Bloods first started in New York. He was getting a lot of heat for it back out in West. Mm. So, you know, that Rico shit is for real. That yeah, is for real. Like, Yo, what up? And so when we flew him to New York, we put him up in a hotel. Him, uh, a couple of other Bloods he came with from Cali. And uh, it was a big thing. This was held at uh, the Alpha Masonic Lodge on 125th and Lexington. And uh, the Nation of Gods and Earths were there. The FOI was there. Uh, the Bloods were there. Crips, Latin Kings, the Yetas, yeah. uh, a few gangs from Chicago. And uh, I took the floor. I took the floor and was giving them all uh, the ends of the house of what this blood stuff in New York was about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, which had started in 1993. You know? And so T. Rogers needed that clarity from New Yorkers himself because the stories he was getting back west was all speculative. So when we bought him here, he trusted his brothers because we all come from gangbanging mm -hmm. and we just happen to be Freemasons now. So it was more wise for him to trust in his brothers. And we chill with T. Rogers. And and this 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 when this took place, T. Rogers, right? Only his peoples would know this. T. Rogers is going to do a part two to that uprising. We actually took a photo for it. It was like 50 bloods. Everybody had the red rags up. T. Rogers is in the front. I was on the right of him with a red fez on. And we had a few malls in there because we had the malls there. Like I said, we had the five percenters there. We had uh, met everything you could think of you see in New York was there. It was real big. And um, the only negative thing that happened that day was uh, one of the Muslim sisters uh, got violated when somebody was uh, checking, doing the security at the door. She don't like the way she was felt. And so a lot of heat came down on us and uh, we was no longer welcome in the building no more. Wow. And so, you know, uh, now I crossed over from the clandestine Freemasons to uh, Prince Hall. Now, a lot of Freemasons watching this might be like, yo, what do you mean clandestine? You know exactly what I mean when I say clandestine. That means yo, yo, Michael Jordan, Ed Jordan's ain't real. So I'll get over where it was real. <laughs> That's what's wrong. A lot of Masons are scared to address and check all the Freemasons. We, look, before you're a Mason, you're a man. And I don't care if you're a Mason, Shriner, 5% of Muslim, you're going to get checked if your shit ain't right. And so I left the clandestine stuff and became Prince Hall affiliated. You know, I went over there. This is after I got my life together. I went over there because they not, listen, these gangsters out here think they're gangsters. You fuck around with the Masons if you want to. Abracadabra, yeah, okay. 
I went over to Prince Hall where my shit was right. And they welcomed me with warm open, open arms. I joined Boyer Lodge number one. I worked myself up in the higher ranks. Became a noble and the most honorable temple in New York. The mother temple. Mm. Medina Temple number 19. Now all I got now is story, six grandchildren, and gray heads. You feel me? <laughs> wow. Yo, you, you, you have lived a very full, full and, and, and vast life, man. You know, every time I build with you, I'm learning something, um, you know, from even what you at one point doing music, which a lot of people wouldn't even know. You actually tried music before. I tried music in 1986 to 1996. Uh, rest in peace to Don Rubin from uh, Don Rubin's Bike Shop in Brownsville. I was hanging with the Jamaicans, man. Shout it out to Smiley Don, my man Lion Rex. Mm. You know, the old Don Rubin crew. And when you hang with the Jamaicans, what they were doing at that time was they would pass the mic around and be chatting. Yeah. And be writing in, in, inside the bike shop doing music. So I was like, fuck it. I don't ever see. Put them in the east, put them in the west, pull the Josh, he's the best. And I was like, yeah, I'm about to be the new sh uh, snow. You know, you know, doing my little one too. And so I had put out a record back in um, 1995. It was corny as shit, but we did it because we had money. <laughs> my brother in law had money. We had a record label called New Horizons. Shout it out to MC Lord. I mean, we was just so old with it. And we had our stickers. We had the street team. We had a poster. We had all that. I used to be on the radio. You had to actually pay to get on the radio. They stopped that now. I believe you could lose your whole radio doing that now. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, we had record pool out. I was putting my records in record pool. Uh, I was doing a lot of shows. And my shows were way better than my record. My record was bullshit. The, my record was straight trash because... When you're dealing with these a and and all these small record labels back then, you got to do what they say. They was giving me hokey pokey beats. And now I'm no longer a hard reggae artist. Now I'm like Mr. Rogers in your neighborhood type fucking artist. So I got fed up with it. I got mad because they was converting me into something I wasn't. I wanted to talk about guns, pussies, and crack. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, no, talk about how women need to do this and guys need to do that and stay in school. And I don't want to talk about none of that. So I quit the music shit. No regrets. Because whatever rappers is making, I'm making the same shit today, B. Yo, my head ain't big, but my confidence levels is mad high. Because I stand behind everything I do. You know what I'm saying? Six figures a year sitting on your ass is not bad, B. And I always throw that in the air to let the people around me know, family members and friends, you can do it. I'm the dopest dropout of house who I ever met. Word. Yo, as I said, the guard J Low is in the motherfucking Indeed. building. J Lo. Yeah. You heard? And you know, on a on the hangout, you want to get some history. Yep, definitely. You know what I mean? You want to get some history, you want to get some jewels. You know, we 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 like to, to joke around and shit, but we like to also have a message behind that. And um, even though we we brought the brother on, cause I wanted to hear some of the pimp stuff. You know, um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. We commercialized it the best way I could, but uh, and then pimp shit, man, huh? I heard about the bottle one that had me thinking. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I wanted I wanted I wanted to let y'all know I got a lot of different associates, Rod, hey, a, a Fetty. I have a lot of different uh, friends and associates. So we want to bring these people. These people are doing things. They're moving, and we want to highlight them. Uh, and we just want to talk with them outside of like you know in front of a desk. Yeah. You know what I mean? We want to we want to do it like on some laid back kickback style um the low don't smoke a drink over there i'm gonna say this i don't i don't see him doing indulging in all any of that either so the brother be on some straight edge you were smoking the guard was just just building with us while we while we indulging by kool-aid dude so he is <laughs> so, so the kool-aid so the guard so the, so the guard is saying this in straight mind and everything this ain't no like drunk speech like <laughs> Nah, this is real. It's very, it's very much on point. Very much on point. 
Let's get into some topics, man. Let's get into a couple of topics, man. Topic time. So, um, oh man, that's twice that should happen. Yeah. It's the headphones, right? Yeah. Um. So, damn, twice too. So, um, I want to get into some topics. Pardon me for that for that squeak. Um, on that just happened. I, I hate using headphones, and today when I uh, fucking use these goddamn headphones, you know, <laughs> two fuck ups. Mike, I, I, that's something I learned new. Mike next to headphones, no go. No bueno. No bueno. Um, right now, they're saying that, that in New York City, um, they say that the shootings is going down 20%. But recently, yeah, I'm about to say, I'm about to say, um, you had a teen shooting in NYC, 15-year-old was shot and killed in broad daylight, come out of summer school. Um, the gunman is 17 years old. This happened in Bensonhurst um, in, after summer school. Um, you also had uh, three male teenagers were shot. Three male teenagers were shot, 15, 17, and 18-year-olds. Outside of Red Lobster on Times Square. Yeah. Two were shot in the leg, one was shot in the arm. Also, as we said last week, but we didn't really get into it in, in depth. This is not New York City, but this was another shooting. Um Gilly the Kid's son um was was killed in Philly. And um they just they just buried him this week. You know, my condolences to um Gilly the Kid and his family. Uh, a lot of shootings is 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 becoming. Uh, let me say this, not to say that we didn't go through this, but it seems like this year it kind of like you know I, they say it's down twenty percent. I don't see it, but it's been kind of up this summer. Um, I see these kids in pool shiesty mask. You know what I mean? You got kids in pool shiesty mask. It's a heat wave in New York, a mm -hmm. hundred degrees, nice. man, and with a hoodie on. <laughs> Let me say this, man: when I see hoodie and and shiesty, pool shiesty at, in this weather, I already, I'm assuming that that's what you want. Like I'm just gonna assume it. Like no lie to you. Like if I don't think you're thinking that way, I'm an asshole because whoever could do 120, because with that sweater on, it's 20. 120 with a pool shiesty on, you you on some you on some. If it happened, it happened. Mm -hmm. If I if some action come my way, I'm ready. Shit. Um. So, you no. Know, how y'all feeling about this um situation that these situations that been going on in New York City and just the whole environment right now when it comes to these shootings? Yo, these shootings. I'm not saying that 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 it's not happening all the time like that, but. It's the fact that it's happening with before it used to be like, oh, they was they was having a shootout. Now people just get shot. Just getting shot. It's not like anybody's aiming to get to that person or whatever. They just yo, bye bye, bye bye. Just shoot it. Just shoot it. So now they saying it's twenty percent down, but what I'm saying, where? Twenty yeah. percent in what, Canarsi? Yeah. Cause the shooting is every day. Every day. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know where they get that statistic from. Uh, not us. I've seen it in the, uh, on uh, Instagram and mm -hmm. my feed that it was 20% down in New York. I'm like, what part of New York? Well, Bay Ridge or something? Yeah. Just, <laughs> and then that's the, and that's in that area. Yeah. And that's what it is. In that area. Every day. I'm in that area. The Bronx. Oh, it's like the Dominican people were with it on plays. World War Z over there. Shout out to the Bronx. Shout out to the Bronx. It's hot. It's hot over yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shouting out to my Dominican brothers out there. They not playing. And uh, so I'm trying to figure where's the 20 what, or the, the 20 percent. Like what made them come to that average? You know, 20 percent ain't even 20 percent down in my house. <laughs> <laughs> like they be shooting at each other in the house verbally with words. Yo, that's what I'm trying to figure. You know, 20 percent weird, man. The news is tripping, man. Yeah, they, they just say that to get you like, oh, all right, you know. I know there's no shooting, but no. 
people yeah. dying every day, I know, but that's a separate thing. You know why? You know, you know the stories behind it. The calls are there. The 9-11 call. The That's what nobody, call nobody's calling. Yeah. Nobody's calling to the ambulance show. Yeah, <laughs> you know what it is? They do, they want people to spend that summer money. Yeah. They don't want. They don't want you to be outside scared. They don't want you to be out there yeah. like I'm not going to Coney Island. I'm not going to Forty Second Street. I'm not going to this place. No so far Rockaway. They I'm want you to going. spend that summer money. A lot of businesses is, is is waiting for school to be out, and parents having to spend. You know, I think you know. Um, you know, definitely. I just, uh, I just, I just think they got. We got a new commissioner now. He's he's Puerto Rican. I don't know his name. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, and we don't have a, a secretary, a part of our um, <laughs> staff. <laughs> when we get to that today, when we get to that point where we got like y'all watch Mace and uh, Camera show. Oh yeah. When we get a little bit more paper. Oh, right. make sure you uh, if you try to support us. We have our cash app link in the bio. I know Jay don't go and have a joke about it. <laughs> Yo, but I read uh, one of his posts said, uh, cash app, people who put their cash app in, on posts is a new form of back yeah, yeah. <laughs> The new form of back in the cash app. It's, it's called donation. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you get donations you know. out here. Yeah, we, know, we just want, we asking... For donations, if you like um our content, if you like what we coming up with, donate to the spot. But also with that description where you can find that, you can find our Facebook page, you can find our radio station page, our website, our Instagram, our TikTok. Everything. Um, if you want to tap in with us, make sure you hit the buy the description up and hit them links in that description. Um also make sure you Subscribe. Don't be a ghost follower. <laughs> Don't be a ghost rider. I'm watching you. Oh, that's a new one. Ghost yeah. rider. Don't be a ghost rider. We don't fuck with ghost riders on Captain America. No. <laughs> on Captain America. <laughs> we don't fuck with ghost riders on Captain America. So don't be a don't be a cap in America either, man, because I hate liars, man. We're I'm post a photo of one day. I got fifty likes and three thousand views. I said, damn, now I'm looking forward to the views. I don't even pay the likes no more. How many shares they gave you? Yo, I ain't get no shares, but the oh, thousand. No, they did. They they uh they screenshotted this shit. Not lean. Because it definitely is. They wanted to get the, they wanted to get the credit. Yeah. They're like, who's he? He nobody. Then you run into him in the street, they go, Yo, I like what you did, bro. I'm like, yo, you didn't even like my joint. You didn't like oh, it there. Sorry. Okay. Oh, that happens a lot. That happens a lot. I'm not gonna lie to you. That definitely happens a lot. Um, you know, speaking of, you know, we just talking about these young um, shooting. A lot of the, a lot of kids being shot. Bang bang. I want to go into drill rap real quick. And this was one of them. This is just one of them thoughts that is going to make you go. Mm. And I'm, this is not like this is not some something profound. No, this is not a profound thought. This is just like. I didn't get this one, and when and and when I and when I finally somebody broke it down to me, I said. So speaking of you know these shootings and stuff, drill rap. Let's talk about drill rap real quick, man. Yeah. Um, do you have you ever heard a drill song and they be like, Joe, I'm not a, I'm here, I'm holding the Glock, holding the pole. No, 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 no. Have you have you heard that? Yes. Yeah. And when I, someone said this out loud, I was like, that's supposed to be the demon voice. Wow. It makes so much sense, though. Because so many of them do that. Yep. So many of them do that. But when someone broke it down, they was like, that's supposed to be the demon voice. I was like, demon time. Wow. So I know the people in here um, who's, who watches us, a lot of y'all are like of our persuasion, 40 and better. If your kid has a demon voice, <laughs> if he's telling you, give me some money for the studio, 
if he's telling you, you know, mom, yo, I'm, I'm into rap, if you're taking him real serious, and he never plays your music, his music for you, but you might have heard him in that voice. <laughs> Throw some holy water on that nigga. <laughs> Throw some holy water on that nigga, cause that nigga is needs an exorcism. This is crazy. The the demon voice. So if you think you're a plus child who goes to um Brooklyn Tech or something, but they in the room and they sound like Carrie. Yes, yeah, they sound like shit like that. They sound like yeah. I'm possessed. If that if they if they sound like the potion dice or something. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> do not get a money for the studio. Do not get a money to the for the studio, man. Can't you see the baddies coming through? Don't you see the demons? Yeah, that's the crazy. They like oh. gripping a pole, gripping a pole, riding a toe. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, like yeah. Cookie Monster was the first drill rapper. <laughs> this for Cookie. This for the fucking. Yo, it's crazy, man. It's could be street. It's crazy, man. Like, yeah. So I just had to talk about the demon voice. Pay attention to your kids, man. Yeah. Make sure they don't have the demon voice. They, <laughs> if they have the demon voice, man, and your and your and your son telling you he rap like J Cole, he lying. <laughs> that nigga lying. He out there shooting somebody. Word. He over there running running the block, running them down. And then you know what happens? Something happens, and they make the and and something happens to them. They be like, my, not my boy. I'm like, not Teddy. No, Teddy's name is Deadly. In the streets, they call him. <laughs> you never hear about them in jail because they never make it there. Mm. They be nah. getting body left and right. That's crazy. They don't even never hear about them in the prisons. Yo, their careers be like three years. Like they be gangsters for three years. Their lifespan be like. Two and I say years, two years. Know? I say two years. The first year they fill in they sell. Yeah. By the second and third, it's over. You can't tell them nothing. Like they've been here for years. Man, Tad, well, you remember that time? Man. Now you know what's funny. I, and and I, I thought about this recently because I was listening to some like young kid like talking talking on on YouTube. And he was like, yo, we've been out here, man, long. We've been, we've been doing this for a minute, right? And you know what's crazy? When I was like 23, 24, I, I remember talking to my cousin, sounding just like that. Like, yo, we've been out here, man. I've only been out here, out here like doing crime for like 11 years. But that 11 years felt like... Long time. Like 30. Like, hey, we've been putting Ever. mad work, nigga. And, and, work. and the reality is, like, we was like... Wet behind the ears still. Wow. Even at 24, like I see these 24 year olds, you know, I have my man Dre in here, I have John in here. Like 24 in reality is like still like really young. It is. Like it's like it's still like, I, they may not feel that way. We felt like that at 25, yeah. we were old. We was old, like you couldn't tell us like, yo, we just like, I'm like. If your kids are 29 and 28, like yo. That's still babies. That's still babies in the reality of and of, of things. So I like it's so I get it, man. I get it, but you know, times done change. Times done change. Um, things done change. Right now, um, a lot of people are talking about the Y and the Y N W Melly mistrial. Um, nine people, vo um, nine jurors voted not guilty, and he had. Three motherfuckers who don't know what the fuck they was thinking. I don't know. You know I'm, I'm not here to judge nothing. But I'm just saying this is what happened. This is the facts. It was a, a mistrial. They're already putting in the paperwork for a retrial. I don't even think they try to give that nigga a bail yet. Nah, they not. He not coming home. They're they not even trying to get that nigga a bail. That's, that's the thing about the. That's the thing about the mistrial. You you, you get a mistrial. Everybody, like, oh, he, he he good. He good. No, you never really go. You, you you get a mistrial. Now, depending on what you, you know, get locked up for or whatever, yeah, but him, so that's double murder? Nah, you ain't coming out. They come up with the next. No, we don't, we don't need you to tamper with any more witnesses while you out there, you know, because we trying to build a case against you. We done, we done, everybody done showed their hand already, so let's go back and start again. Any charge? Everybody's trying to find their mistakes. Try to so they got to keep them in there. He not charged with killing friends. He's charged with killing his childhood friends. Childhood friends and from point blank range. Exactly. From point blank range. Uh, uh, 
What's the word? Allegedly. You know what allegedly. (laughs) You know that guy. You know him. Yeah, um, you know, I hear a lot of different things about him, man. And I said this in another show. I don't know if if it was um the hangout or style by poverty, but I'm not gonna lie. He looked kinda off. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't call, I'm a good judge of character. And like, let me say this, when I was young, I don't know if y'all remember, well, we all, you know, 40 and above. Back in the days, cast I wore glasses was like really gangster. Mm. I can't explain it. A lot of dudes that I know who was like on that time. Free. They wore them glasses, and it was just like a throw off. It's like an art of war thing, like oh, kid, baby. Yeah, like you don't know what I'm really capable of. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie to you, that's that energy that Mel gives off. Like the smile is so like huge. You have a huge like oh, he has a huge a smile, and it seems like it's like devilishment behind that smile like he definitely got one of them joker auras like you know what i mean and i'm not gonna say he did it i don't know i don't know nothing i can't even i don't know i don't know nothing but but he looked like damien <laughs> he looked like damien yo when you watch the omen the original one and Whoever whoever chooses the actors to be these people, like, you know, you can't have, like, a real gangster nigga and a nigga look like Roach from the Cosby show. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to get a Wesley Snipes looking nigga. Like, you couldn't have had Theo as Nino Brown. <laughs> Theo as Nino Brown, nigga would have laughed that shit out the uh, fucking gate. My boat. Jamal Warner. You know what I mean? Michael Jamal Warner. Yeah. Martin. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when you look at Damien original shit, yeah. that little nigga. <laughs> yeah, he's white, <laughs> but I'm calling him nigga. For the reason. That little nigga look crazy, man. <laughs> when he riding a bike on the stairs, like up <laughs> on the top, and him I said, Nah. They're far. I ain't fuck with him. him. I said, yo, even when he turned older, the, the kid that played him older, it's look so crazy. crazy. He looked like a white male. <laughs> it looked like they, like, it's, the, it's a different type of people, but it's the same person. It's crazy, man. But, um, you know, I'm not going to say that Um, I hope he get out of jail. I'm not going to say, I don't know what type of nigga that nigga is. And I'm not, ho- I don't know him. If it was my peoples, I know my man, I'm gonna say free him and all that shit. But I'm not just I'm not with that free and everybody just cause it's that's it's popular culture. You know what I mean? Some of y'all niggas need to be in jail. Motherfuckers <laughs> be locked up with pedophilia and they be like, free my man. And what do you do? Slid the baby diapers. Free him. That's a fact. That's a fact. Your man, your man, your man doing, your man it's doing. Man. Yo, yo, no, how about this? Your man doing twenty, but he still told on the cartel. Right. He got twenty though, but he told on the cartel though. Don't think that niggas that tell automatically get go home. Nah. They were supposed to get a hundred years, so they got we twenty. People want it when you check up on it. The first thing they say is, "We gotta stick together. We, 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 we ain't going to baby diaper." We got a sister. They be the first ones be like, yo, you don't got the paperwork. Oh, shit. We a paperwork guy. Get away. We so saw on the first episode. Paperwork, work, dude. That shit gonna follow you everywhere. Yo, we about to close out, man. We about to close out. I had a lot of, a whole lot of other shit to talk about, but um, I'm going to save that for tomorrow because we actually filming another episode tomorrow episode five i got some people coming in i know for sure for sure ray clouds is coming in if, you know what i mean the mixy guard is coming through um uh, so it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of crazy you know what it is we trying to bang out content yes we trying to bang out content right now right now we not we not half assing it let me say this setup is not as easy as you think <laughs> i hope to god that the audio came out Half as correct. If not, I would have to edit an hour and a half um, video 
which is not that hard, but it's work. We good. It's work. I don't know. No, it is. I'm. I'm not gonna lie to you. Have you ever? Be, are you a person that do something all the time, all the time, and then it becomes when you do it so much that you can't judge it no more? Right. You know what I mean? Like right. if you look at lines all the time, all the time, all the time, and then sometimes you're like, is that straight? <laughs> Is my head cricket or is that straight? Like, so what with sound and 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 visual, like the, the stuff that we use, it always sounds and looks off to me that I had to like really just now. That's why you saw me throw the headphones on. I it seems I'm hearing extra sounds in the room, and I think that that's what I'm hearing. But that's how acute my hearing is from always having to analyze sound. Yeah, so it kind of it be, it becomes like um yeah, and then another thing you become what's the word you become um jaded, you get become jaded by it. Like it's like, it, and I'm hearing it. Like sometimes I'm be hearing the sound of microphones even when I'm away from microphones. Like it's something I hear. Like do you hear that feedback in the room? Right now I can hear the fan, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what I was hearing. But I'm so used to not being on this side next to the fan when I'm doing this. So I could hear the fan right here, right here. So I think that's what it was. But I got some more topics for tomorrow. We're going to be talking about scamming tomorrow. If you don't know about that dude, Punch Give Made me. Dev. Me Punch Made Dev. I'm just going to drop it there. If you don't know who that is, he's a famous scammer right now Give who's me. who... There's a lot of controversy over him. I'm not going to go into it. But we got a lot of things we, um, we're going to be talking about tomorrow. I got two guests, um, um, two dope guests coming in. Yeah. Don't forget, Wayne's birthday um, barbecue with S Street Media happens on August 19th. Under One Umbrella, uh, under one umbrella at Club Evolve on Thompson Street on Canal, August 10th. Summer Jam. Next Saturday, let me just say this, if you don't know, well, the Summer Jam shit is going to be a movie. It's going to be like a mini Rolling Loud. Pull up. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm telling you. Pull I'm up. not going to lie to you. Mini, yeah. mini Rolling Loud. Mini Rolling Loud. Yo, we also got the Shake This City Midnight Summer Cruise happening on August, thir um, August 12th. All the board. Movie shit. Movie shit. We're going to be on the water smoking a couple of quarters. Yeah. You heard? Waters and quarters. That's a fact, though. That's a fact, though. Um, with some, with, with some senoritas. Drinking some margaritas. <laughs> yeah. You heard? It's going to be a movie August 12th. Movie time. Movie time. Again. Yes. Check us out every week, man. Sometimes we doubling up. We trying to we trying to throw that that motherfucking um that content out. You um we trying to throw that content out to you. We not we not slacking on this shit. We on your neck like razor bumps, my man. It is real. It is real. Tap in with the hangout. We just hanging out. We family. We are gonna always have family members coming through. Shakers and movers in the city and outside the city. Yeah. You might have some foreign biddies with some nice titties. Yeah. You heard? Right. That's what we do. That's what we do. You're amongst the guards, man. You're amongst the bros. You're amongst the tribe. This is a tribe called Bless. Yeah. And this is S Street Media. Description. Go check out our description. Follow us on Instagram. Yeah. Donate. Motherfucking check us out on all these other social media platforms. DM us. That yeah. is real. And if you're uh, a uh, if you're uh, a fan, as Ghostface said, <laughs> goddamn right, we fuck fans. King me, king me, hang hey, yeah. king me. Yeah, we're hood. We're hood oriented. <laughs> you are. We hood oriented. If you want to pay homage. <laughs> Pay homage. You are you're amongst kings. You're amongst kings. That's what it is. Thank you for supporting us. Subscribe, like, comment, share. Do what it do. Yes. Don't be a ghost rider. And when I and when I see you, you said you didn't see it, but you really capping America. Capping America. Capping. Captain. Captain. 
<laughs> Cap in America. Then you burn. Cap in America. These Cap in Americas. We don't fuck with Cap in Americas. All them ghost riders, Nicholas Cage ass. Uh, uh, you heard? Lion King. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact though. Shout out to my man Jay Novo. He's coming through the hang now. You heard? Yeah. Shout out to my man Woody Wood. Who's out here? Yeah. That's our new Ed McMahon. We we Johnny Carson. Yeah. And he's Ed McMahon. He chills with us every Friday. He's always in the building. My he's friend. always supporting. You might see him at an event. He's always there. He's moving. Um um real quick. Um, didn't you just have uh come out in the magazine? What magazine you came out in? Yeah, let's go. Dude, uh, I forgot the name. It's called Intrigue Magazine. Intrigue, that's correct. That's correct. That's great. That's a fashion magazine from Boston, brother. Yes. By Kerry, Kerry Singleton. And uh, what you call it? What did um they feature um um in there about you? Uh, do what I have, you know, my contribution to graffiti and my contribution to my clothing brand and you know what I'm doing and you know where it's going. What's the clothing brand name? Uh, this is the way we live, and then I have another clothing brand called Formula, which you know I explained what it was, baby. What about you, broke? That's a tag, brother. That's a tag. <laughs> That's a tag. That's a tag that that That's that a tag that follow you for the rest deals, of your life. That, 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 that yeah, that deals with um currency and money. You know what I'm saying? So when I do art pieces that has that deals with currency and money, that's where the you broke comes in. Yeah, you got one. You just showed me one crazy. I don't want to blow it up because he's always working on stuff. Yeah. And we know young dudes is biters. Don't we know your dudes is biters. They, 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 this is not 1989. Nah. Your dudes copycat. Your dudes duplicate. You think your, your, um, what's the word? Your, uh, you think you're flattering us. Nah. You're not. You're battering us. We in a cloning era. Yeah, era. Phantom of the clones. Yeah. <laughs> you are these. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. They, they definitely AI. AI. They yeah. definitely AI. Artistically ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so again, you chilling with the hangout. And yo, thank y'all for tuning in with us, man. Don't be a sucker. Follow us. Peace. Peace.